our statement of faith, I think is very important. If you've been here, you hear my what, what I feel like is important for us to know. If you, if you go to a local church and belong to a local church assembly, which this is what this is and you are, then um, it's, it's very important that you understand what we, we believe, especially um, now in the hour which we, 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 we live in. You need to know what your, what your uh, church stands for. And, and just because it says a church doesn't mean that it stands for what you think it, it stands for. So we just um, like to take the Bible and just remind you um, exactly what we stand on. So we've been going through all, all of those. You can go online and see our, um, our belief statement. And, and it's just, that's all I did. Just, just took it off um, and, and just kind of went over that with us. So we're going to do these two here. That I, I kind of just didn't really skip over, but I did. But just kind of going through other things and, and dealing with what we've been dealing with. So I'm on number 14 and 15. And um, so this should be, should be for good, some, some good topic today. Number one and, and 14, we believe in the reality and personality of the devil. I mean, some churches you can't even say the word devil. <laughs> if you go to one like that, run. <laughs> Where are you going to run to? Here. <laughs> here. Run here. Um, the word, de- the word, word devil, the actual word devil itself actually means, you know, Satan is his name. It was Lucifer. We're going to get into some of the scriptures tonight. Lucifer, Satan, Satan, but the devil, the devil more or less describes um, what he is or what he does. Um, and, and there are several different uh, words that, that feed into that word in, in the Greek. Uh, a trickster is, is one of them. A trickster. He, he, he tricks. Um, penetrator. He's a penetrator. Um, one of the things that's important to realize about, about that is he, he penetrates. Anything that penetrates, it, 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 it takes more than you give it. And that's how people get in so much trouble with, with sin. I mean, you, 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 didn't, you, did, you, you didn't mean to indulge as much as you did, but you just, I mean, you're going to give him an inch. But he don't take an inch. He takes, he takes a foot. And that foot becomes a yard and all these kind of things. So that's, that's what he is. So it, it, it's important that, I think I don't want to go through a whole, you know, demonology teaching or anything like that tonight. But I just wanted to, you know, what, what's even more important um, is that we have to understand that every everything that is everything that is bad comes from the devil, and everything that's good comes from God. So that's about that's about as pretty simple as we can get. Um, in in Boston, just a week or two ago, there was a um, well, outside of Salem, I guess it was in Boston where they had it. Uh, they had the uh, a satanic uh, sat- satanic, um, just um, well, the, I'm going to say a fellowship, but I guess what it was gathering. Let's use the word gathering, um, and everybody starts freaking out. Oh, you know the devil. One thing about Satanists is they don't believe in the devil. They're 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 atheistic more than anything else because they don't um, are agnostic. They don't they they, they use the term the, the devil even they don't believe in a literal devil because to be honest with you, if they believed in a literal devil then they would also have to believe in a literal god so they don't get literal on anything so you got this big old huge satanic um uh, gathering together are, are people who basically if you begin to read uh, begin to look at and i'm sure y'all don't and you don't have to but but it it every everything that is that is against the kingdom of god is what they stand for but that's still not the biggest danger. We, we get that. I mean, we don't, we, you know, we, we learn that by the time we're in the third grade, what is, pretty much what is evil and what is good. Our, 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 our good conscience tells us that. But, um, but it plays into what the, what the devil wants to, that, that you really don't believe in him. And that, because if you do believe in him, then you believe in all the detestable, you believe in the, in, in the, uh, in the actuality of, of, of a devil. And so, uh, so even Satanists itself uh, serve him by not really believing in him. You know, that anything that empowers you, anything that 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 um, that that makes you feel good, anything that gives you self freedom, um, all these things, it just it just feeds in feeds in and all of that. So, uh, so it's very important that you uh, come go to a church. I mean, I I was raised. I I would you know. 25, 30 years ago, it was just a known fact. I mean, you, you will, well, Pastor, you don't need to put that in there. There's people just don't believe in a literal devil. And so it is important um, just for the fact of it, it is real. So we believe in the reality and personality of the devil and eternal judgment 
in the lake of fire for the devil and his angels. So anyway, let's get some scriptures to see what, um, what's going on here. Uh, so let's go to Matthew 25. And obviously, if we're going to believe anything, we're going to do anything, we're gonna, we take it out of, the, out of the scriptures. We take it what the Word of God says. Because one of them, um, if you've been here, we believe that the Bible is the inspired Word of God. If it's in the Bible, it is truth. And so we believe in that. So anyway, this is, um, we'll use this one, Matthew 25 and, 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 and 41. Without reading the whole thing, just read the scripture. Um, then he will also say to those on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire that is prepared for the devil and his angels. So you can see that we believe in a place. So we don't, so, so I guess the best way to put it is we don't think that God was joking, that Jesus was joking here. This is in red. That this is Jesus saying that there is a, there is a, literal, there is a literal hell um, that, is, that is prepared for the devil and, and his angels. Uh, one of the things about the rich man and Lazarus, I brought it up a couple weeks ago, that a lot of times people think that is a, a, a parable. Uh, a parable is a uh, is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. It's, it's just kind of it is more, uh, more metaphoric. God just using a, a parable for it. But um, the fact of the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man opened his eyes up in hell. It is not a parable. It's an actual story. So you say, how do you know? Because every parable Jesus starts out by saying, I'll tell you a parable. And so that's a, we could use that scripture. See the literal. Uh, that there is a place, literal place called hell where the devil opened his eyes. I'm sorry, where the, the rich man opened his eyes. He was in hell and, a, um, and, and, and the beggar, he opened his eyes and he was in paradise. He was in the presence of God. And so we have to take, we do take the, um, take the word um, at, at face value. Um, let's go, it's not up there. Let's go to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter number two. Um, it's just kind of, this is kind of important, some things that, um, I have to always kind of stop when I when we make out our statement of faith. We've added some scriptures to it just by me doing this. Most of the time I do, I add some to it. Um, there's so many scriptures you can add just in the reason why we believe what we believe. But in Ephesians chapter number 2, verse 3, well, let's start with verse 1. Um, Ephesians 2. And you he made alive who were dead. How many knows that you were, uh, you were dead, but now you're alive? Well, some of you still dead. How many know you were dead? And you, he made alive who were dead. Now, remember, remember, uh, death means, uh, understand the Bible when you read it, death, dead means separated. So now we can read it this way. Have me know you, he made alive who were, who were separated. You were separate. That's what death is. Death is separation. And so who was, who was separated, who was dead, and trespasses in sin. That actually, that, that trespass and sins means you were, you were dead because you were breaking the law. Not the law of man, the law of God, the, 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 the statutes of God. And so, um, in which, verse 2, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. Remember, the world is not the earth. The world is a system. It's a system. So, when I was talking about um, the, the, the satanic gathering um, up north, it was everything they believe in is on the course of the world. The world is a system that is set up against the kingdom of God. There's only two systems that were battling here. Either you belong to the kingdom of God or you belong to this kingdom of this world. That's just it. And so he says, at one time we, we were a part of the, according to the, the, uh, of, uh, of the course of this world. We're on the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we once was, we once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were nature children of wrath, just as other. But how many are thankful for verse four? But God. <laughs> I mean, we can't just point our fingers and like, but, you know, but that we, we were heading right down that slippery slope. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love in which he loved us, even though we were dead in our breaking of the law and our trespasses. He made us alive together with Christ, for by grace you have been saved. Yes. Amen. Amen. One just the most um, uplifting scriptures there is because such for some of us. Um, the prince of the power of the air, 
we see here in Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse 3. And so what does that mean, the prince of the power of the air? Well, if we were going to teach a little demonology or go into demonology, we start saying that, that the devil is the prince of the power of the air. That that's, that's, what our, that's what our battles is. That's, I mean, the devil isn't somewhere tonight. Uh, well, he is somewhere tonight, but I promise you it's not, you know, in the core of the earth or amongst a bunch of flaming fire just sitting on some concrete uh, thrown somewhere with a pitchfork and you know, a big old tail somewhere. He's, he's busy at work doing something. He's somewhere. He's, you know, understand that, that the devil, which is, which is Lucifer, he's a, he's, a, he's a fallen angel. He's one of the, the three angels uh, of Gabriel, Michael, and, um, uh, and, and, and Lucifer be, being the three that God created. He's, he's a, he's, they're the only ones that, that has the two titles of a cherubim angel, which is, which is rank of authority, a high rank of authority. And then the, the highest rank you can get is an archangel. And there's only three of them. And uh, maybe I teach you sometimes about threes in the Bible, how, how important threes are. Anytime you see threes looped together, their significance. Um, so you see these three, Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer. So you know there, there, there's three. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You see three. So you see the, see the tr Trinity. Outer court, inner court, most holy place. You see the threes. Uh, spirit, soul, and body. That's us. You see the three. You see God's signature. There's a, there's a purpose there. And so whenever we see the Bible talks about these three angels, and one of them, one of them uh, rebelled against God. Rebelled, we'll, we'll read the scripture in a second. Uh, but he, he rebelled against God. Matter of fact, um, uh, let's just stay on this. Matter of fact, <laughs> matter of fact, it's stronger than my stay on this. Let's go to Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah 14. We'll just read through this real fast. Try not to stay too much. And, and again, now we're just teaching, you know, because we believe in 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 the, in the literal. You know, that the, the devil. You know, it used to be a song, K Sarah Sarah. Whatever was that? Who it was? Doris who? Day. Doris Day. <laughs> um, didn't have that album, but I know you're talking about Doris. K. Sarah. Anyway, bottom line, that, that's what the enemy wants you to think. K. Sarah Sarah. Nothing against Doris Day. and um, Just didn't have it. Anyway, K. Sarah Sarah. And that's what the enemy wants. If he can get into the church, oh, just, you know, whatever. K. Sarah Sarah means whatever it may be, it may be. You know, whatever. They may, maybe there is. No, we got, to, we, we got to understand it, it, it's literal. First of all, well, let's read this and see if I can remember this thought. But it, it, the devil is busy. He's always been busy, but he's really busy right now. Why? Because he knows he has but a short time. And the Bible teaches us that. Um, maybe another thing, I'll make, keep making notes and everything else I'm going to teach you on, but obviously the threes would be a good teaching. Um, the 6,000-year lease on earth it would be a good teaching. You say, what is that? Well, there's a, you, can, you can break down the scriptures and believe that and, and have an understanding that since the, since the time that Adam and Eve was deceived, that the devil being the prince of the power of the air, and we know that he has power, he is the prince of the power of the air, which means he has, he has, he has power. The devil has power. I mean, you look around, the devil has power. He has power. God gave him power. He, he has it. He created him as, as, as Lucifer, this, this, this powerful um, um, angel. He has it. And now he's, he's, a, he's a fallen angel because he, he rebelled. He rebelled against God. Um, he, 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 wanted to, he wanted to set him own self up as authority. Well, before you can set your own self up as, as authority, you got to remove yourself from an authority. He removed himself from the authority of God and set himself up as authority. Anytime we're not under the authority of God, we are, we are setting ourselves up under our own authority. That goes all the way back, even before Adam and Eve, under, uh, under, un, under the, the enemy's uh, um, sin of, of just, just being under your own self-will. And the enemy did, and, and the devil did that. This Lucifer, he, he did that and became um, this, 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 this fallen angel, and he has power. He has power. I was, I was talking about 6,000 year lease. And so when he did that, and then he, he came down to earth over in Genesis 3. We, we know that he, he tempted Adam and Eve, and, he, uh, and, and, and they did sin. And, and, and now, and now why, why did he, he has power? Why did he need to tempt Adam and Eve? Because they had something, because the, the chapter before that, God's told Adam, he, or, or, or it's conversation between God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He said, let us make man in our image. 
And let us give them power. That word power there is Uzi, that, that is that is authority. Let us give them authority. That word authority there means right. Let's give man the right to rule. Whatever they name on earth, whatever you say that is, it's going to be. And Adam had that. He began to name the fish of the seas, the, the trees and everything. He just, he just, the Bible don't go through detail. He just named it. They had the right. And the right, whatever you say it is, that's what it is. The devil didn't have that. He didn't have that. And so that's why he zeroed in on this creation that God made. And so he, he, took, he took the authority. He took the authority back from man. And so now the devil has. So now he has power being thought, and God threw him out. So now he, he's, roaming, he's roaming around the, the, the atmosphere of the earth. Um, oh, my goodness. Um, y'all still in, y'all going to need some fingers to, or some fingers, depends on where you're from uh, tonight. So go to 2 Corinthians um, chapter number 12 real fast. And, um, and I'll, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. And, and then keep a pinky over there in, in Isaiah. Or if, you, if your fingers are all off, just put a thumb there. I don't know how you can pull that one off. But 2 Corinthians 12 and 2. See if I can find it. Um, here is, this is important. Here is, um, let's see. Do I want to do this first? I, hold on one second while I create a sermon real fast. Uh, 14, 19. All right, Isaiah 14, 19. Y'all might can get it up there faster than they can. Uh, oh, y'all quick. Acts, in Acts 14 and 19. Yeah, I, I said second. They're going to listen quick tonight. Second Corinthians 12 and 2. Put another finger or somebody else's finger right there. And then get another one. And then, so, so right now we got Isaiah and we got 2 Corinthians, and, um, and now I'm in Acts 14, verse 19. Acts 14 and 19. Then the, then the Jews from Antioch and Isaacum came there, and having persuaded the multitude, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city. So basically, they, they were tired of hearing Paul's preaching, so they stoned him. And they stoned him, and they presumed him to be dead. However, when disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went to the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas and Derbe. Now, that's one, the reason why I want to use that is because um, they, they stoned him, and they stoned him. I mean, that's, you know, back then, you, know, you, you just threw, that's how you try to execute somebody. They threw stones. And... And they're teaching here, especially Josephus, early church historian, they threw so many stones at Paul until he fell, he collapsed. And when they collapsed, they don't quit throwing stones. They keep on throwing stones at you while you're down. That's how they executed you. And he's down, even to the point that there was a heap, literally just like a, a, a grave on top of the ground, full of nothing but stones, okay? And they presumed him to dead. Well, these guys was pretty... They were experts, if you will, of killing people by stoning them to death. And so if they say you're dead, chances, chances are pretty good that you are. Okay. Now, with that in mind, we're, um, I'm done with that. So now we're in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 2. And Paul says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago. Now, Paul is that man. Now, when he's writing 2 Corinthians 12 and 2, the incident we just read in Acts 14 was exactly 14 years ago. So you can, you, can do the, you can do a study on Paul and realize that the incident that happened when he was stoned, presuming to death, was 14 years before he wrote this. So now basically what he's saying, it was me. And so he says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows. So was he saying, I was stoned, I was left for dead. Whether I was dead or not, I don't know. I don't know if I died. I don't know if I died and God raised me up. I mean, that's just what he's saying. I, I, I don't know. You hear a counsel of that now. People dying, think they saw a light, you know, went to hell. We, we got books on people think went to hell, went to heaven. God showed them different things, all this kind of stuff. But anyway, here's my point. I don't know. All I know is God knows. Such a one was caught up to the third heaven. To the third heaven. You see that? The third heaven. I have no idea. Uh, there it is. 
in the third heaven. The reason why I wanted to go to that is whenever you read Ephesians 2 and 3, and, and, and Satan is the prince of the power of the air, you put these scriptures together. So if I was teaching a demonology class today, we begin to talk about the heavenly realm. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities of the heavenly realm. Okay? And so we understand that that's what we're battling. Everything you're seeing, there, there, there's, there's a devil behind it. Remember, the, um, I said I'm going to do demonology. I shouldn't have said it because I can't get off of it now. But the devil, he's not omnipresent. What does that mean? He's not everywhere at the same time. God is. Okay? Um, he's not omnipotent. What does that mean? He's not all-powerful. But God is. He's not omniscient. Is there threes again? The Bible is teaching in that too. What does that mean? He's not all knowing, but God is. So the devil don't know everything. That's why sometimes people think that's and I, nothing against our known prayers. Whenever we're, we're praying unto God in our understanding, the devil knows those prayers, and he battles and he fights it. But when you pray in the spirit. First Corinthians says, how be it you pray in mysteries that cannot be uttered. Well, I, I heard somebody praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit is not, is not always in tongues, but a lot of time it is in tongues. You can, you can pray in, the, in tongues in the, in the known language and unknown language. The bottom line is when you get in the Spirit, God, God sends some kind of the, the, this delusion to the enemy that he don't understand what you're praying. You don't understand what you're saying. What is it? It, it bypasses the enemy. So now instead of the enemy knowing what you're praying for, what you're asking for, what God is saying, he now got to figure out, try to figure out what's going on between you and God. Why? Because he's not omniscient. He don't know everything. And so anyway, there's three things. So if he's all these things, he's not here at the same time. So he delegates his authority or his power. He delegates his power. Let's deal with this authority thing since I brought it up a while ago. He brought up, he, he had authority. He got that from the first man, the first man, Adam. But 2,000 years ago, he lost that authority because the second Adam came and he took authority from the devil. So now the devil still has power, but he lost his authority. For what, remember, Corinthians says, what the first Adam couldn't do, the second Adam came to do. And now before that, whatever the enemy wanted to do, he could do because not only did he have the, the power, but he had the right to do it. Jesus came, and now he took the devil's right. What does that mean? He can't just do to you whatever he wants to. That's not as good news as you think it is because you can't blame everything on the devil. If the devil can't do everything he wants to do, then that means you have power to stop him. Oh, come on, church. Submit, James 4 says, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. I'm just preaching, I'm just telling the scriptures. And he will do what? Think about it, hang around for a while, go to another room. Uh-uh, he will what? Flee. Flee means he's leaving fast. Submit to God, resist the devil. What does resist mean? Antihistamine, where we get the word antihistamine from. If you got a cold, you're sneezing, whatever, you take an antihistamine, what does it do? It suppresses it. And a histamine means you start, you put pressure on the devil. Oh, hallelujah. He's coming against your children. He's coming against your marriage. He's coming against your body. He's coming against your church. He's coming against your, your, your joy. He's coming against your peace. So you got to submit. Your, All right, God, I need you today. God needs you to help me. The enemy's coming against me. I, I, I feel some stuff. I feel some unsettlement in the atmosphere, and he's there. And now you submit to God. He'll begin to give you the power, the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, and then you begin to resist the devil. How many of you don't resist the devil just by screaming at him, even though it feels good? The antihistamine mean the reason why the antihistamine works, and there's a certain timetable in which you take your antihistamine. That's they get the word antihistamine means. It means it's like a time release. It's not just showing up on Sundays and Wednesdays on Easter and Christmas. That means every single day you're keeping the pressure on the enemy. The most powerful force on this planet is not an explosion, it's pressure. Pressure. No, it's that big old mushroom cloud. No, it's pressure. You can move mountains with pressure. You can move entire skyscrapers with pressure. 
and, and walking with God and talking with God and reading your word and praise like we're doing a while ago. Be, not, a while ago when I says, you can either do a praise or be a praise. Honey, when you're being a praise, that's keeping the pressure on the enemy. Oh, hallelujah. You begin to learn that, that the power of life and death is in your tongue. How can you do that? Because the devil lost his authority. He lost his right. Where did he lose it? Jesus took it from him. Remember, Jesus went down. The Bible says in Ephesians, he went down and he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. What is a key? A key is authority. If I give you the key to this building, that means you can come in here anytime you want to. If I give you the keys of my truck, then pastor must think I can, he, I can drive his truck any, anytime you want to. Well, did you steal it? No, I got the keys. Got the keys of your house. You leave here and I leave before you do. I go home. I'm eating your popcorn. I'm watching your TV. <laughs> and drinking your Pepsi Cola. If, if you gave me the keys, I'm not, if you gave me the keys, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a trespasser. Jesus took the keys. When did he take them? When he defeat, when, when he went to the cross and he died. Did he take them in? Uh uh. When he got up. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. He defeated death. So now he has authority. So now when the enemy comes against you, remember I said authority means what? Right. right. The right. He has a right to do it. But now he lost his right because Jesus now has a right to, to come into every situation. So that means if the devil lost his right, or if the devil lost his keys to come into your life, to come into your marriage, to come into your children, to come into your will, to come into anything that's in your life, then he is a trespasser. Oh, the devil's been in my family, he's been in my grandma, he's been in my uncle, my cousins, we're all dealing with all this kind of stuff. He's a trespasser. And no more will you let a trespasser come in your house and go to your grandma's house and go to your uncle's house and go to your, they're trespassers. You know what you would do? You would find the biggest stick, the most powerful gun you do, call the, you do whatever you got to do to remove that, that, that trespasser from your premises. And that's what we need to do whenever we realize that the devil is no joke, that he has authority, he has power. And once you see him at work in your life, you got to say, oh, no, bud, you can't stay here. You have to go. How does he go? By, how does he go? By submitting to God. Say, God, I need you. And God's okay. Greater is he that is in you, the Holy Spirit, and he that's in the world. And you begin to resist the devil. Not just by coming to one Wednesday night service. Consistent. Come on, front row. This goes all the way back to like, 2001, when the first thing I began to learn, how, how, do we, how, how, does, how do we celebrate 25 years of doing this? It ain't because everything's been, been easy. Consistent, persistent, hostile pressure. I mean, sometimes you got to get hostile with the enemy. Hmm? Oh, no, devil, you ain't having my babies. You ain't having my marriage. You, you're not, uh, you're not, you get, get out of here. I mean, you just, you just start, I mean, you just, you just get into, and it's got to be consistent. got to be persistent. And that's what you want. You take the antihistamine. You don't want to quit sneezing now. You, you hoping three hours from now when you're on the phone at work that it's still working. Amen. Anyway, so, um, I don't know where we get all the way over there. Because he is the prince of the power of the air. I was trying to tell you about Paul. If he goes up to the third heaven, you know what he said? The third heaven is paradise. Or the third heaven is, is heaven. Amen? Heaven. When we say heaven. So when you say heaven, we don't, think of, we don't think of where we are right now. But this is the first heavenly realm. We're scientists and we're teaching. This is the first. Then the atmosphere Somewhere, it depends on which science you read, somewhere up above our head up here, you go into a second atmosphere. And that second atmosphere goes all the way up through the Milky Way and the, Mar, the Mars and you know, our galaxy, our, the Milky Way solar system all the way through there. And, and, and just, we, we know more about the sea than we do about the, about the, about the sky because it's so vast. It's so huge. I mean, there's, I, I read this the other day. I know I'm, I'm, I read different stuff. But there are more stars in the sky than there are, watch this, sand. We're down to be. 
I mean, there's a lot of grain, grain of sand. There's more stars. Now, th these, are, these, are, these are scientific studies that said that. So the heavenly realm is vast. Some are all through that vast one is the place called heaven that we call. But Paul says it's the third heaven. That's where God is. That's where, that's where the throne is. That's where the, you know, the, 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 the heavenly holy furnishings is. Everything's up there. It's heaven. So when the devil, when he say he's the prince of the power of the air, that means his power is delegated to, to everything below heaven and all the way down to where we are. And he has, he has power. He has power. And that's what we're dealing with. That's why, we're, that's why you see so much craziness. He has power. And he don't have the right unless we let him. And that's why he just, he, he, he's either, he's either, he's either um, he, he tempting, tempting or he is, uh, he's, he's either possessing, he's either oppression, oppressing, or he's either obsession. This whole stuff we've been talking about, this whole LGBT stuff, everything, that is an ob obsessive spirit. It's a level of obsession. You can, you can see it. You can see the obsession in it, which, which is the next step before possession. It, it's, de, it's, it's all demonic. Anyway, it's all demonic. Um, the whole AI thing, I don't want to bring that up, but just because we're having fun, what is AI? Art, art, artificial intelligence. No, what do you think about it? Well, it's just it's fixing great over there in Revelation. With, with the whole, the whole under the under the watchful eye of the Antichrist and the false prophet, the graven image that everybody's going to worship under. It's not just you know back then, you know back in the back in the late eighties, believe it or not, when I really started studying all this stuff and and getting involved with all this stuff, just because that's what really intrigued me. Whenever I began to open the Bible and really study it out and and, and dig it and find out for myself what's going on, you thought the graven image that everybody was going to worship during the tribulation was going to be just some big big stone statue because that's what we thought it was back then. We, we had no idea. You know, we, we watched the Jetsons, but we never really thought it would come to that. <laughs> and now you got artif artificial intelligence. We're afraid that, you know, everybody's jobs, everything will get, ta get taken over by, by uh, people who are robots who look just like people. You say, well, that's, that, that, that can't happen. Well, you could be, <laughs> you, you could be working, you could be working beside a girl, but it looks like a boy. Who thought that was going to happen five years ago? Things are happening quick. So anyway, but all of it's demonic. Well, who's behind all that demonic end? The devil. So under this whole atmosphere, this, the, 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 the whole atmosphere is up there. That's why, man, let me tell you something. And let, unless you have the power, unless you have the spirit of God all over you, all over your family, then that's what we are accessible to. And the devil wants you to think there's nothing to it, but there's something to it. Okay? Um, I have no idea where all our fingers was at, so. <laughs> I just wanted to teach you that. Oh, y'all want to go back to Isaiah? Okay, Isaiah. Isaiah 14, 13. How are you fallen from heaven? O Lucifer, son of the morning. Lucifer again is the devil. You are cut down to the ground. You who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, now understand this was, this was past. This is Lucifer up in heaven. And this is, this is, this is uh, before the fall of Adam and Eve. This is, this is eternity past somewhere way back in there. You said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. On the farther side of the north, I would, he, he's just saying, I'm going I'm I'm to build my kingdom. He said, I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. And then the future, the future is, verse 15, which hasn't come to pass yet. Yet you shall be brought down to seal. Seal is another word for hell. You shall be brought down to hell to the lowest depths of the pit. And then this is more future. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook the kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroys its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners or did not let the prisoners set free. So what, put all this together. What is this saying? This is past, this is 
past and future at the same time. This is the devil. This is Lucifer rebelling against God up in heaven because he's tired of all the praise and honor and glory going to God. That's why he's always trying to get us to worship him. That's why when he tipped in Jesus in the garden, he says, I'll give you all of this. I'll give you all of this if you worship me. It goes all the way back to eternity past. He still wants God's worship. He still wants God's worship. And he tells Jesus, I will, if you worship me, I'll give you all of this. All of what? He's standing on a pinnacle up on a hill, basically saying, I'll give you all of this. I'll give you, the, I'll give you this atmosphere here. In other, words, in other words, what he's really wanting him to do, he says, I'll, I'll stop with the sickness. I'll start, stop with the addictions. I'll stop with the torment of your people. I'll just stop and just let you have it. Let you have it. Didn't know that, did you? Well, if he didn't have it, how could he offer it? Come on, church. If he wasn't the prince of the power of the air and he wasn't the one that's controlling all this, all, this, all this sin and all this debauchery and all this immoral and all these things that's happening, he, ha he has it because God kicked him out of heaven and, and, now, and now he's have it. He's over it. But guess what? God's going to deal with him. That, that's, our, that's what we know is going to happen. And he knows that God's going to deal with him. He knows his time is coming. And so, he's there. And so the reason why you say, well, I don't get it. He, he, would have, he would have stopped all this. Well, why didn't Jesus do it? Because Jesus didn't come to cut a deal with the devil. He came to defeat the devil. What was he? Remember, this was before Jesus went to the cross. He's trying to stop Jesus from paying the ultimate price of taking the authority which he has away from him, watch this, and give it to us. He said, I'll, I'll peel back, dude, and just let you be son of God and do whatever. But they will not be completely free of me. Jesus no, I ain't come here to cut a deal. I'll come here to kick your devil butt and take all power. And all authority. See, that's what the devil is still trying to do is cut deals in churches and with Christians' lives. I'll peel, I'll, let's cut a deal with the devil. I'll leave your daughter alone, but I still got her. I'll leave your marriage alone, but I still got it. Knowing good and well, he's a liar. and He's the father of lies. Jesus, knowing he was, uh-uh, I'm not here to cut a deal with you. I'm not here to get you to peel back. I'm not here to deal with, watch this, I'm not here to deal with the symptom of what we're dealing with. I'm here to deal with the root of what we're dealing with. You want it to quit hurting or you want it to go away? Here's a better terminology. Do you want relief or do you want deliverance? Come on, church. There's too many relief churches out there. Too many relief preachers out there. Too many relief faiths out there. We'll just, we'll just give you enough just to give you relief. But we really can't go after that old dog that is really destroying your family. That is really, You look pretty on Sunday and you make it most Wednesday nights, but deep down you are struggling. You're better hanging on. You don't have a clue how long your children are going to continue to want to come to church because you're cutting the deal. Do you want relief from that or do you want to cast the devil out of your family, out of your marriage, out of your children so no not only would they not have to deal with it, their children won't have to deal with it. Mm. See, I dealt with this junk a long time ago when my children were small. What's your point? So now I've got grandchildren running away from here, running around here. What's your point? They're not delivered from the symptoms of the devil. They're delivered from the bondage of the devil. See, this thing gets gener generational. Honey, if generational curses can go through the third and fourth generation, how much farther can a generational blessing go? Do they still have to confess Jesus? Oh, yes, they are. But let me tell you something. Their percentage of saying, yes, Lord, just shut up it, it, just a lot. Because what old granddad did. Why did I do it? Because my granddad did. 
Come on, church. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord God forever. But as long as they say, well, he ain't really real, he ain't really a real place, he ain't really going to do it. No, the devil is going to hell. Ain't none of my people going there with him. Huh? So we got to get that back in the church. People are dying and going to a place called hell, and the devil is sending them there. And we're trying to figure out whether or not we need to make it a church or not. Honey, we need to make it a church and pray that we see some folks in there that needs to be in here. And we're not here to, we're not here to give them relief. We're here to give them deliverance. Come on, Wednesday night. You're my core, man. This is the core of the apple right here. If I can get y'all to get it, man, why, why is this place different? We're not, di we're, not giving you, we're not giving you a sustained pill that you got to keep coming back every week and get it. We're giving you a name of Jesus that will set you free. And once you realize you can be free, I know some other folks that needs this as much if not more than I do. Just starts popping up in there. And if they can go there and get relief or come and get deliverance, let me tell you something. I'm going for deliverance every single time. Amen. Oh, Ooh, what do we do now? I was going to try to finish. I didn't get, I didn't even finish for 14. And I really want to get to 15. But I can't. Amen. Anybody got anything out of what I said tonight? I want to get you mad, man. I want to get you mad. I'm mad, I'm mad at that devil. What you doing in here? I mean, go. That's why I'm at this kind of thought. I'm like, I say something crazy like I did something like taking the doors, oh, the hinge off the door. Honey, no, I won't. I won't joke him. That's what it takes. Take it off. Why? You do whatever it takes. Because if there's a spirit in your house that is not godly, it's of the devil, and it's, it is it is trespassing. You know what I just said? It's trespassing. Yeah. No, it's got to put up with it. Put up with it. Put up with it. Remember, what I tell you at the very beginning? The word devil means trickster. It means penetrator. If you start putting up with it, it'll grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And the thousands of people that I've that I counsel and sit and I talk with them, they say, I don't know how it got this way. It's because you let him in. Hmm? Sin sits at the door and waits. All the way back in Genesis said that. Sits at the door. If he's sitting at the door and waiting, that means he's on your porch. Our problem is we'll watch him and we'll walk around him. We'll step over him. But he ain't at the door, so he's okay. He's laying at the door. What's he waiting for? For you to get a couple with him and then just lay the open door. Next thing you know, he's in. Well, how did he get in here? If that chucker shows up on your front porch, run his tail away. If that offends you, I really don't care. Run him away. Run him away. I'm done. Just trying to figure out how to. We've landed the plane. I'm just trying to how to get out. Let me say, let me read this one thing here. It was on me Sunday, and I didn't go there and it popped back in there again and you know I was, I was talking about I was talking about um, Adam you know how, what, what God did and, and the place he put him and, and and the Lord in verse 15 I'm in Genesis 1 and 15 and the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend it and keep it and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden you may eat freely but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for that day for if you eat it you shall surely die and then the Lord said it's not good for a man should live alone I'll give him help mate he goes in there and talks about he gives him he gives him Eve here's my whole point ladies you're going to get ready to shout or hit your husband, one or two. I don't know, man, get ready. He told Adam this before he even created Eve. He never told Eve not to eat of the tree. He told Adam not to eat of the tree. Adam did a bad job of relaying the message to Eve. It was Eve's fault. Well, wait a minute. God never told Eve not to do it. He told Adam not to eat of it. Then he made woman, and then... 
if Adam would have told him how serious God was, how bad sin was, what's your point? My point is, it's time to get back and not making the same mistake that Adam is, is let people know, don't fall for the devil's mess. Don't call for his persuasiveness. Don't fall for his trickery. Don't fall for his, for his, because he, that's why Eve was tricked. Adam was, un, was, was unfaithful because Adam did not listen to God. And that's what the enemy wants to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. We have a word. We understand that it's true. And we're not going to let go down by what the enemy says. So anyway, that was on there. So I gave y'all go home and study it out and do what you want to do with it. Amen? Amen. So the bottom line is we have power and authority over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means harm us. And you receive that tonight? Yes. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. <clears throat> We'll deal, we'll deal with hell the next time. So, Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is faithful and true. Holy Spirit, we ask you, God, to surround us, God, with angels all around us, God. Protect this word, God. God, as it penetrates our hearts. God, I know, Lord, the enemy comes to kill, sin, and destroy, Lord, but you come that we might have life. And I pray tonight, God, that you would prick our hearts, open up our hearts, God. May God set us on fire for desire, Lord. God, may we not give any place to the enemy, Lord. No position of opportunity. But God, may we know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I thank you for the power and the authority that is housed in us. And we walk and we carry it. And for that, I thank you and I praise you for it. And we release that knowledge now in Jesus' name. Amen.